If the area in question one is 25% saturated and a saturation partial pressure of water vapor is at 30 Celsius is 4,246 pascals, what is the local evaporation rate in a unit of kilograms per meter square per second? So we're dealing with question one. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste what we have for question one. So we have the drawing still. Oh, only half of my wall came. There you go, full wall. Um, let's start with the first thing, which is what the hell is this? Right? Kilograms per seconds per meter square. Kilograms, that's a mass unit. Uh, seconds, that's a time unit. And then meter square, that's an area unit. Okay, so mass per time, that is mass flow, right? Mass flow. And then area, right, area. And that is very similar to our heat flux, remember? So this is, but this is a mass flux. And where does that come from? Well, remember the convective coefficients? Sorry, the convective equation, Newton's law of cooling. It says this. Now, for mass, remember, it's mass flow rate equals the um, coefficient times the area delta C. So, if I divide everything by the area, I get right. And this is what we call we use J to identify the mass flux. So that's just mass how mass is traveling through a certain area. And that's what they're asking us. So they're asking us, please find J, or this case here, please find J. So if I wanna find J, if J is my, my unknown, what I'm trying to figure out, then I just need to multiply the K mass, which we already calculated on the previous problem, times the difference in concentration. So as long as I can find the difference in concentration, I can figure out this problem. All right. So what do we have here? We have air in question one at 25% saturated and the saturation partial pressure of water being 42, 46 pascals. So 25% saturated, what does that mean? That means if I zoom in, okay, I already have my zoom in square there, my control volume there, and I get air, so this is air here, right? On this, so I'm, I'm inside here, this, this uh, square. 25% of this square should be water. So 25% of the volume on that control volume there is water. The remaining, so the other 75% is air, right? So, and the, the water vapor pressure, partial water vapor pressure is over here. So if I go over here, the pressure will be 42, 46 pascals, okay? If where I have water is 42, 46, where I have 25% of water is gonna be 25% of the 4246. So note we have a pressure gradient here. And like we talked about before in the theory part, a pressure gradient is equivalent or can be translated into a concentration gradient, right? Let's go back to where this comes from. Let's go back to the, quickly to the theory where this comes from. If you guys, Recall, you probably learned this at some point in time. If we have a, I'm doing a closed container here and I'm putting, I have water inside this closed container. Okay, and I have air on the top part of that. We just talked about just now that how molecules, some molecules, the molecules that are already on the surface and they have enough kinetic energy, they will overcome the barrier and go into vapor form. And that, I could tell, like we talked about before, that's just a matter of probability, right? Kinetic energy distribution of molecules. Some of them will be above this threshold, which will allow them to escape. That's just, right? And likewise, we're gonna have some other ones that are gonna be here, and that will be going back into the liquid phase. So we're gonna have this constant, back and forth of particles, particles jumping from the liquid form into the vapor form and some jumping from the vapor form into the liquid form. Eventually, what will happen is what we, eventually we're gonna reach equilibrium, right? Nature always looks for equilibrium. We know science will use that a lot. And what happens when we reach equilibrium is we're gonna have a certain amount of molecules. The amount of molecules that are jumping off and jumping um, from the liquid to the vapor and from the vapor to the liquid are the same same quantity, and that's where we get our vapor pressure, right? PV vapor pressure. And that's what the whole thing, the whole idea for this is coming from. Okay, so 
in this point in time, inside our wetted wall, we don't, we haven't reached equilibrium yet because there's a pressure gradient just there, right? So we're going to have water molecules that want to jump, want to go from one part to the other. So what we need to do is we need to convert our delta P, as in pressure gradient, into a delta C, okay? And there's two ways you can go about solving this question. You can either, uh, let's go ahead and do our ideal gas equation. Uh, what am I saying, N or M? We'll do N for this one. Um, we can either use the ideal gas equation where we're at low pressures again, right? So we, at low pressures, we can consider the vapor, uh, water vapor uh, as an ideal gas. It was going to be in the order of 2%. Uh, we can either use, get the pressure of one part and convert that into concentration, and then get the error, the pressure on the other one and convert that into concentration and do the delta C. Or we can do the delta P and use the delta P and convert that into delta C. It's up to you. It's the same thing in reality, physically, mathematically, same thing. It's just a matter of the way you understand the problem better. Okay. Now, like we did before, remember that if I do N over V, that equals P over RT. N over V, N over V, it can be either, if it's N, it's gonna be mole over meter square. And that's a unit for concentration if you guys were lost this whole time. The other possibility is if I use M, you can have kilograms of meter square, meters cubed. These both are units for concentration, right? N over, so this guy here, N over V is my concentration, right? So what I can do is I can apply this for one pressure, then the other pressure, then do delta C. Or I can do my delta C will be equal to my delta P divided by my constant, R is a constant, and my temperature is not changing, so it's also a constant. Okay. I particularly find this way to be more intuitive because when we do this way, check out what's going to happen. We can first calculate our delta P. Delta P is 40, what was it, 42, 46? 42, 46 pascals. And the other side, we have 25% of that, right? So 25% of 42, 46. So my delta P is 31, what is it? 3184.5. Okay, this pressure gradient is what's driving my molecules to go from the wall into the air, from the air back into the wall. Okay, this is the pressure gradient that's going, that's making things happen. Okay, and that's what over time is going to push things to equilibrium. Okay, so my delta C, so let's do delta C now. My delta C will be delta P divided by R divided by T. Okay, this will be 3184.5 pascals divided by what is the ideal gas constant that we do the general one. This one applies for any substance and this is in joules per moles per Kelvin. And my, what was my temperature again? Forget, 303, 303 Kelvins. Okay, once again, remember that pressure, uh, sorry, Pascal is, can also be written as joules per meters cubed, it's the same thing, energy divided by volume. So joules and joules, uh, Kelvin, Kelvin, and we're left with moles per meters cubed. Like I told you guys, that's one of the units that the concentration, right? And this turns out to be 1.264. Okay, so in every meter cube of volume that I have in that problem there, there will be a difference of 1.26 moles of water that will drive this mass transfer, right? Now, what I could do at this point in time is I could go ahead and calculate J because check out J would be, J would be the 1.264 times the K that we calculated before, which is 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus two. And that would be fine. And I could get something that would be moles per seconds per meter squared. Okay, that would be 100% okay. The only reason why I can't do that in this problem in particular is because they're asking us specifically for kilograms. Oops, kilograms, right? So we need to convert that for moles into kilograms. And that is fairly easy for us to do because we know getting your 
this thing off your chemistry knowledge. We know that the atomic mass for hydrogen is one and the atomic mass for oxygen is 16, right? So we know that every one water molecule will have 18 grams for every mole of water that we have. And relating those 18 grams to the 1.264 moles per meter cubed, I can relate those two guys there. And I'm gonna get delta C. And I'll say that's called that delta C sub kilogram just to differentiate between the two. Will be 22.75. So 22.75 grams per meter cubed. Okay, so I just transformed from moles into grams. All right, so now we can finish it off. J, which is what we were after this whole time, equals um, K from previous problem, 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus two times delta concentration, 22.75. And yes, we've been asked to have it in kilograms, not in grams. So we still need to do a little conversion here. And we know that one kilogram is the same thing as a thousand grams, right? So multiplying by one, not changing anything. And if you guys recall the unit for that is meters per second on K. So we have uh, grams, kilo grams. We have meters, kilo V is cubed and leaving with meters square. So my J in this problem will be 2.43 times 10 to the minus four. 2.43 times 10 to the minus four. And that is kilograms per meter square seconds like we were asked to do. Okay, and that's the mass flow rate, that's mass flux I should say, mass flux that is taking place in that wetter wall between water and air. Any questions from your side?